Gala, because... Uh, Bring real life back in, possibly. I may be even giving that too much credit. I, I'm trying to stay clear here. I, I don't I don't want to see you dragged down by it, not because he offends me. I find him just plain silly and, and ridiculous now. We're the truck drivers and Howard Stern, I, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't put into my schedule, you know, listening to the radio for that long. I, there's just too much working at the hat shop and everything. But I really wanted the knowledge. I really wanted to know what was going on. So, well, see, you're coming so, on the whole thing really late. He's been at it for over 10 years. I know, I know. And I remember you would talk about him, too, in the past. So part of my the Most, cre yeah. part of the credence I gave it was because of you also. Right. But, but keep in mind, it, and it was even before radio, it was, it was some of the cable things where he really brought out what was alive with the guest. I mean, James Brown is suddenly playing this beautiful blues piece on a piano. Wow. You know, uh, even Tom Jones, Frank Zappa's daughter, really great stuff came out. But that's the past. So I I don't it's, know what Harold thinks about. It. I'm well, curious. What, what about what about Harold? Have you watched Harold's uh, style of interviewing? D you know, because you were talking about something that it, that's valuable for all of us who are taking people's time mm -hmm. to have them view us. I think whether Howard Stern still has it or not, I think it's valuable to consider what it was that he had. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Empathy, maybe. Um. I think he knew what was, he wanted to hear what was real in people. Um, I, I'm almost afraid to give you one example, it's kind of corny, but I, I can't think right now. He would say things that you wanted to ask people, but it wasn't hurtful. It, uh -huh. it was, no, I know, but you were afraid to ask. Right? Yeah, but people for really your wanted sake. to know. But for and your and own I think sake, that yeah. the interviewee took it really well, and they, they weren't, he wasn't, um, laughing at them, I think that's what you it is. You know what, I'm glad we had this conversation, Helen Harold, because I think what it is is what I'm finding as a rule of thumb, you can do almost anything you want as long as you have no ill will in your heart. And if you have ill will in your heart, I think it's good to do some type of purification first. However, you know, Helen and I have a long periods in our life of meditating. And I think that can be something where you're running away, but there also, it can be something where you get some distance and maybe you can come out and hopefully, if you still want to have that edgy connection, go ahead and do it as long as there's no ill will. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't think Howard ever had ill will, but he had other guys later come out. I used to love stuttering Bob. I mean, these guys were from a long time ago, um, and you never got a bad feeling. I didn't. Right. Uh, later when I heard, you know, rusty, punky stuff, it was just kind of embarrassing for them, you know. But, uh, but I'm anyway. Sure, but I'm sure, Hella, that he embarrassed himself in the past, at the beginning, to take those risks. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think there was meanness at all. Right. Actually, he was pretty smart. But um, when, when he'd get real, you know, now and then he would. So anyway, anything else? To the community in, that I don't think the internet, of course, is, is, there's a lot of goodness there. There's no question about it. But I, I'm really intrigued with this idea of fear, afraid to be seen and heard. Yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking about that a lot. Obviously, based on my own experiences too. You're putting yourself out at a seminar. Um, you're you you have a moment to be heard, and we're not used to that. I think people are in a hurry so much the whole idea of the ability to listen. As much as Harold likes to talk, he, he does listen. Oh, yeah. No, no. And, and you know, he's been at it for 40 years, so he's seen a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I hammer away on him, and I encourage people to hammer away on me. I mean, my viewers do. Mm -hmm. Because I want to I perfect the delivery. That's why I'm saying I really took in what you said about Howard Stern, but that's not the final word either. You know, I, oh, I'm no. keeping the word out. You know, no. to others, it, and and it's good that you got to el elaborate right now. Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of good talent out there, good people. Yeah. Um, but time. Well, I was going to say it sounds a little cliche. Time is short. It's, it's nice to make the most of time and other people's time, and, and some level of um, I don't know breakthrough or inspiration. Right. So. Well, anyway, I think let's wrap it up. Yes, yeah, I agree. Oh, hang on. Hello. Hey, did you get my number on the... No, I didn't get your number. Uh, I 
typed it in three, four times. I know, and I can't pick it up now. Um, do you want me to call you back or or not? Just might make a comment. Okay, what's your number? You okay. you got to you got to give it to me. You got to go transparent here. <laughs> okay, well I have it already. I mean we're all we're online right now. You all okay? Give it to I can't do that. Okay, I will do it another day. Okay, Steve. Okay, just one input is that uh, I think that whatever you want to put on your website, it hey, makes. Hang on, hang on. She can't hear yeah. you. Hang on, just a second. Hella. Oh, I can hear him. I turned up. Okay, got I, it. Okay, you're on. I think whatever website you want to put on that rings true to you and your personality, you should express it. Oh, for me? Yeah. Oh, well, I, thanks for that feedback. But the thing is, is I've become kind of a creature of my viewers also. So I, I can't help it. It's just right there in my heart. When people care enough to say, send me a donation, or say which show they like, and they give me information. You know, Marshall Rosenberg says, it's not the reward. It's not about the donation, though God knows I so appreciate and need it to, to expand this or even just to maintain it. But when they actually also, it's like putting your money where your mouth is. And it, it just, you can't help it. You just go to where that energy is. And particularly if, if they, respond to a vibration that you have set into motion it's like a tuning fork you can only keep your your humming going so long and then you need someone else to to kind of pick up that that vibration and then your heart just expands and it grows and and so you know like the website i have now i liked the picture and molly didn't like it and we're back and forth but then somebody gave me some feedback about it and made me reconsider but, I mean, it's a work in progress. Well, I understand that, and that's life. Life is a work in progress, you know? Right. Um, Let me tell Hella what's going on. Hella? Oh, yeah, I'm listening. What, what's going on is uh, there's different people that are giving me different designs. And, yeah. And I'm just sort of considering which way to go. And part of the reason I want to go to Columbus, Ohio, is to sort of get that middle of America vibe. And even though this person doesn't know particularly a lot of my 9-11 stuff, or he sort of tolerates it, um, I really like the fact that he came to me from Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that yeah. I find very fascinating. And, I, and, and it just sort of represents something I could learn from. Let, let, any comment on that? I think work in progress is the best way to put it. Yeah. And, and, you know, going into a little bit to visually what's you and expressive, I notice there's kind of a pink background on the website, and that can be a little bit um, uh, youthful or, or, or girlish. And will that be taken seriously? be interesting to see what, like Steve says. I find it kind of pleasing. Okay, let me see what Steve says. Steve, what do you think about that? If I have too much pink, it'll be too girlish, and I won't be um, considered seriously. And God knows these are serious topics. Well, you know that uh, I've always said that as a journalist, you have to be very careful what, how you represent yourself and what you represent, because that's how you're going to be branded, you know? Howard Stern is a shock jock. In real life, he's a puppy dog. He's nothing like this show, okay? This show is totally shock jock, in your face, so you don't like this, let me give it to you so you can really see it. And people like that, because they like controversy. And he's become very successful at it. So he's not changing that platform. But when he's with his girlfriend for how many years now, she says she, he is just a little puppy dog and just completely a different human being. In fact, she never, ever watches his show because it's <laughs> two different people. <laughs> oh, my God. I've got something in common with his girlfriend. Let me see what Hella has to say. Hella? Yeah, what do you have in common with... Oh, we don't listen to his show. <laughs> Wait, I was kind of onto what Steve's saying, and yeah, maybe yeah. he's expressing what I've been struggling to say, is Howard Stern is definitely not who he is on the radio. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on him, but I saw him on 60 Minutes, and I felt, oh, it's, it was depressing. He went through a lot of the shock I did in public school. It was violent and so forth, and he looked still pretty shell-shocked from it, as I did, too, going back to visit a public school, considering my daughter going there, and it, it had been very violent. So it was a past trauma, and he had it, too, and that's how I always connected with him initially. 
Um, but yeah, Steve's right. I think Paula came in on Howard so late in the game that, um, you know, maybe it's just a moot, moot point and, and just take him off altogether. It's, it's almost irrelevant to what you're doing. I think it is, because he's just a persona, and speaking of which, other people are working for him now. Anyway, he's not really doing that much. Right. Let me see what Steve said. Steve? Yeah? I, I find this very fascinating. What do you think about what Hella just said? Well, you know, she has a good point that I think uh, Howard Stern is a shell of what he was in, uh, in the early days. And, you know, as I heard from people in the industry, he's not really pulling in that many people, you know, like he did before. And I think that the people that listen to Howard are really on a low vibration. I mean, for the most part, okay? Well, let's not be that judgmental, but let's get to the numbers. He said that when he came on to Sirius, the subscribers were 60,000. And now, and he said then it, a year later, he was dressed up as Santa Claus. He says now we're 6 million. Yeah, but how many people actually watch his show? I don't know. Let me ask Hella. Hella, you know because Olin is a serious, a serious, serious. We subscriber. never listen to him because, and it's nothing against Howard. I think that's clear from my side. It's just boring. It's it's boring. He almost needs us to make him kind of interesting again. But I don't know what his feeling about life is right now. I didn't quite catch the part about the girlfriend. I always what your question was, but I always felt that. He'd like you because you, um, you're you authentic, and I think Howard Stern is uh, on his outside his show. But, no, he's a, he is a shell of himself. It's, it's, it's true what, what Steve said, and, you know, I have empathy for him. Hang on just a second. You really yeah. need to be associated. As far as numbers, I don't quite buy that. Uh, maybe they tune in for a minute or out. It's not against his audience, but he's just, frankly, very boring right now to me. Okay, well, that's that's your opinion, and Steve's. Yeah. There'll be other opinions, and I know we're all open to sharing them. Let me see what Steve says. Steve? Steve? Yeah, yeah. Any comments? Well, you know, I, I just, again, just want to say that Howard Stern comes from a different perspective. He's a shock. It's Hella, H E L. Rabbit hole. Um, uh, another thing about it, they had they had you, and the article was called Feminist Fashionista, so it had that Berkeley sort of political athlete. vibe to it. Even though that really was referring to the author's teenage daughters who had asked her to come and watch the Saturday Night Live skit of Mommy Jeans, and suddenly she realized that maybe she needed to pay attention to her appearance, that it's not a bad thing to do that. Well, I don't know how much New Yorkers understand. I know California gets a lot of bad, you know, oh, there's just nothing but fruits and nuts in California. I don't think um, New York says that as much, but some people I met in Chicago would say that. I love Chicago, by the way. But um, but Berkeley particularly, and maybe certain parts of New York, the academic world is seen as a place where you don't want to ever consider appearance, but just look like you don't care because that means that you're more tuned in, or as Paula once said, to, to, how did you put it, if you, you couldn't possibly know anything about politics if you were dressed too well, or I, you put it in a, a, a little more of a lighthearted way, but yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. But what about the term feminist fashionista? What, what's a fashionista? I always thought it was well, like the, the communistas or the, you know, because I was never political, actually. In it's almost what they used to call, um, what was it, the, the victims, the fashion victims, uh, on the Princess Diana days, or the Sloan Rangers, that was London, Sloan Street, um, always going after what was the most status, um, visually status uh, enhancing at the time, superficial through money and how much you spend and labels and, and so forth. Huge comment, you know, when you think about it on self-esteem, that you need something to say you're okay, or a message that you're part of the club on, on a grander scale. But but you do have self-esteem going up when you feel that you're looking good and you're giving harmony to the environment, and I think that would but make you... you get there, but when people haven't realized that or don't know harmony because they... You know, it's an innocent thing when you think about it. You, you want to look like Elizabeth Taylor, you want to look like Angelina Jolie, and that's fine to admire the people, but then you need to get back into who are you and, and what 
what's your best look or, or how can you be um, expressing yourself authentically? You know, people can inspire you on different levels, but it doesn't mean you look like that person. Right. So there's a lot of misdressing, trying to emulate or imitate things, and they're they're losing who they are. I mean, that starts at an early age, and some people are very tuned in visually. Right, right. Well, that's, I, I'm excited. I mean, I think we can do a lot of work together on this, and it will enhance both of our, um, you know, soul contribution. We had a meeting last night, or, or Alan's birthday party, and we had a lot of, of his, what's that? Happy birthday to Alan. Yeah, happy birthday to Alan. He's a monkey like me. <laughs> Chinese astrology. <laughs> but anyway, they, they call that mixing the markets, so you kind of come out of your, your cult, and I use that loosely, you know, yeah, when you're yeah. with the group, like you're talking about those teenagers, they get their online community. But I think the exciting thing is is that is when the, the communities come out and they start to merge with others, and then you have these wider patterns emerging as a result of the different interests coming together, and then they grow bigger. Yeah. It, it